Hey there, beautiful people. This is Lindy Ford, registered dietitian, clinical and licensed nutritionist and nutrition detective. So today I'm going to talk about a subject that is near and dear to many of us, and that is how to get kids to eat healthy. Now, I want to preempt that by saying that I am not laying on the guilt with anyone. I understand I've got five kids, uh, I, has, I still have a few at home, and I know how hard this is. I am not mother of the year, and I have struggled with this whole issue. But I just want to give you some really practical advice as to how to get your kids to eat more healthy. Because you know what? Statistically, the studies are showing that kids who eat healthier are sick less often. They are just not as sick. And they do better in school, they have better attention, so it's it's really better behavior actually. It's not the panacea for everything, I realize that. But it makes life easier for you, and we wanna make life easier for you. So I'm just gonna go through a few things now. Honestly, truly, I can't do every everything that I wrote in this bro brochure. I wrote um, a pretty extensive brochure for a pediatric uh, office, and uh, you can get it online on my website, Lindy Ford Nutrition and Wellness. It has everything that lays it out. It's really clear and easy to read. So go ahead and get that, and you can you can kind of round it out. Now, I just want to say something. Um, picky eaters really are made and not born. Now, don't don't t like turn the video off don't be mad at me, don't send hate mail, okay? There are about 10% of children that are hyper tasters. They are the toughest ones. I've heard moms tell me, you know, my one kid eats really well and has since he was six months old and this other kid won't eat anything and just everything. It's a taste feel, it, it, it's a mouth feel thing. And I understand that, I totally get that. And in that 10%, it is they're really gonna be the tough ones. And you're just going to have to have more patience with them. But the other 90% can learn to like good, good, healthy, nutrient-dense food. I guess I became a little less patient with this subject with American children as I have traveled around to third world countries, especially two years ago when I was in Haiti. And my friend Jen and I, I, I remember us being in an orphanage, a very, very uh, neglected orphanage of 100 kids that were literally... Uh, these kids were malnourished. Um, they had they had nothing on their aperture. They were uh, they only got maybe one meal a day, and it broke my heart. And I saw that. And I and I guess when I came back to the states, I was I was a little less patient with American children turning their nose up at everything. So please be you be patient with me because that's where I'm coming from. But let me just give you a couple of points that will help you as parents to get your kids and get the whole family, because adults need to eat healthy too, right? But get your whole family eating a little bit healthier. This is this is a hill that I'm going to die on, and that is have scheduling regular family meals. I know how hard that is. We have ballet, we have piano, we have this, we have that activity. It is so again so so hard to do that. But again, the studies show that um, even you know even if you can just schedule in a couple times a week, it's going to help your children. It's going to help your family because it's not just about the food, guys. It's about the conversation. It's about being together. It's about learning about what's going on in your day, that kind of thing, right? So if you're just doing like maybe one, two family meals a week, perhaps make it a goal. You don't need to make it a goal to do seven, but perhaps make it a goal to do three, you know, three, three or four family meals a week, it will pay off in space. So that's going to take a little bit of planning and it doesn't have to be fancy. My meals, as you all know, are never fancy except on special holidays. They are never fancy because I don't do fancy well. I have, you know, I put the food on the table and it's good, healthy, nutrient dense, and it's easy. So the other thing is don't become a short order cook, folks. This is so dangerous. If you have started doing this, please stop. Just stop. Also, just start early. The earlier, the better. You know, my little one was eating avocados and guacamole at six months old. Please start early. But even if you haven't, stop now. Don't become a short order order cook. The best way that I have found and working with other parents is you make that meal and you put it on the table. You put it in front of them. Okay, you determine when they eat, you determine uh, what they eat, and they determine if they eat. If they don't eat, okay, um, that's their choice, but they don't get to eat one hour from that then and go into the snack cabinet and get whatever they want. That just doesn't work. 
they need to wait until the next meal or the next snack. Your children will not starve. I, I guarantee you, they will not starve. Um, and also, hey guys, they emulate us, okay? If you say bad things about vegetables, they're going to think they're bad, all right? You know, dress them up any way you can. Use, you know, saute them in butter, you know, use whatever, it, put a little cheese on your asparagus or your broccoli, a little Parmesan cheese, whatever it takes to get them to eat that, right? So um, I know my little one, I have a almost seven year old and she gets picky at times. She really does get picky at times, but, um, but she emulates me. She eats roasted seaweed because I eat it. She eats Brussels sprouts because I, I eat them. Now I don't, but, the, but it, there is a sort of a line that you can draw like she doesn't eat sauerkraut I don't make her eat that but she does eat what the most of the time about 80 to 90 percent of what we're eating okay so just really make sure that you put it in front of them and they at least try one bite and for the hyper tasters what I would do which might be really helpful is just have them taste like let's say it's a green bean for crying out loud just like one or two green beans per day for two weeks that normally helps them to develop a taste for that particular vegetable. One taste of it for two weeks, okay? And the other thing is, okay, guys, kids can't drive, okay? I hear parents saying this all the time. My kids are always making bad choices, and it's not always in school, right? Kids don't drive to the store to get the junk food. And so there's a lot of the white diet in the house, the pretzels, and... God forgive me, the goldfish and the yogurts and the cereal and the pasta, that's all really bad crap, okay? I'm sorry, I'm saying it, it's bad crap. And so uh, once in a while those things are fine, but I call those special occasion foods. So once in a while your kids can have them. It, you don't wanna be the, the food Nazi and be that, that parent, you know that parent, that won't let their kids have anything. I let my kid have a cookie once in a while, but we go out for it or we go to a party and she gets a special treat or it's a special treat for once a week, we go out and get ice cream, that's fine but don't have it in the house if it's not there they're gonna be more prone to make better choices and it's probably gonna help the whole family right and also hey folks no negotiation no fighting <clears throat> just take control of the situation no fighting there's not you don't want a big old food fight about this you put it out there you know you make the rule and you stick with it you take control as a parent it is going to make your household so much more peaceful i love what kelly dorfman says she's my absolute favorite pediatric nutritionist and she has a um, she has a private practice and she's written several books i would just totally recommend any of her books on picky eating and what she says is she says most parents don't allow their children to pick their bedtime so what or, or when they want to go to bed or anything they want to watch on TV so why would parents not pick the food the child eats we are raising a generation of food prima donnas by allowing children to have all the say in what they will eat Okay, I didn't say it, don't write to me, she said it, but I agree with it, I actually agree with that because we are, we are raising kids that, it's, it's not pretty when you see a picky adult, it's not pretty when you see a picky teenager, okay, because um, the health implications go right along with that. So you wanna set your kids up early, right? You wanna set them up early for health and wellness and energy. I see a lethargic kids. I see lots of lethargic kids. And GI issues, oh my goodness. I work with children who have GI issues. You know, and sometimes it's because of overuse of antibiotics, but a lot of it is just because they haven't, well, they've never eaten nutrient dense foods. And then also get them involved have them if they're old enough cook with you or chop things up or if they're younger or older have them go to the grocery store with you and have them pick out something okay and it you know make it something other than corn and peas okay I mean even if they have to eat green beans until the cows come home or broccoli that's fine just to get them acclimated and then add a new thing every once in a while don't freak them out don't add it every day but you know put some asparagus in there or whatever. And it will help them so much to be really a, a better person in life, to be honest with you. So 
you know, take me or leave me, guys. I, I know I probably stepped on some toes today, but honestly, truly, it's really for everyone's good. I hope you got a lot out of this. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel, and thank you for liking me on, on Facebook and following me on Twitter. And remember that everybody deserves to be optimally healthy. This is Lindy Ford. Thank you. Bye.